I haven't made as many Seahawks videos this season as I'd like, and I just went back and watched the game against the Arizona Cardinals at home, of course, coming off of a tough loss against the Bengals, a game that the Seahawks probably should have won. Their defense was absolutely electric, as it's been the entire season. But for this one, things definitely seem to be trending in the right direction. Offensively speaking, Geno Smith had an interception that he should have just never thrown. He kind of forced it into coverage on a third down, trying to make a play. Of course, then had the fumble loss. Uh, you had special teams, uh, DJ Dallas losing one, did have a nice return as well after that. But just things like that need to get cleaned up because if those plays can be cleaned up, I think the Seahawks are going to be just about in a good of a position as they can be because when we look at the NFC, you have teams like the 49ers, they've lost two in a row, the Detroit Lions are coming off of an embarrassing loss to the Ravens, and then you got the Dallas Cowboys who are just like, eh, whatever, the Eagles are the favorites in the NFC right now. But the Seahawks last season, they overachieved, they made the playoffs, and then this year they added in a lot of talent through the draft. I mean, we're talking about Devin Witherspoon, who's probably going to win Defensive Rookie of the Year, and then we're talking about Jackson Smith and Jigba, who without DK Metcalf, who by the way missed the first game in his career, five-year career, I mean, JSN looked amazing. I mean, he had that, what, 27-yard catch, picked up some some nice first downs, and he's just always open. That's what I remember him uh, being at Ohio State, is this guy is always open. And Geno Smith is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in football, and he was able to find him. So I, I was extremely impressed with Seattle overall. Kenneth Walker rushed for over 100 yards last season. Yes, absolutely. Went over 1,000 yards but he got injured, but he still had five games of 100 yards. This was the first game all season where Kenneth Walker had 100 or more yards. And I think a lot of that has to do with Zach Charbonnet, the impressive rookie out of UCLA. Whenever he's out there, he's going to get work. Battle's defense last season, it, let's just be honest, it wasn't very good, right? Clint Hurt, he's one of my favorite teeth to do what he wanted. In this season, it's been a completely different case. And by the way, Frank Clark, is signing with the Seattle Seahawks. Remember, he was a second round pick back in 2015. He won two Super Bowls, was with the Chiefs. Uh, they ended up trading him back in 2018. Clark, he just gives a lot of depth up front to the Seahawks because if you go and look at their team, they've got Draymond Jones. They've got, of course, Boy Mafe, who was very good last season as a rookie. This season is breaking out. And then, of course, you've got Daryl Taylor, who had a big sack in this game. He's just all over the field, and we're only going to see more of him moving forward. No Yachena Nwozu, speaking of breakout players, last season came over in free agency and was fantastic. I love this front, and then at the linebacker position, it's as good as it gets. Bobby Wagner leads the team in tackles. You've also got Jordan Brooks, who only played in 70% of the Seahawks' defensive snaps, which makes sense. They were in a lot of dime looks, which means one linebacker on the field. But still, I mean, these guys make tackles. They make plays, and I did not expect this amount of juice this amount of burst out of Wagner. I knew he was far from washed. He's still one of the best linebackers, but he made a couple of plays in this game that had me extremely excited. It looked like the old Bobby Wagner from, of course, before he ended up going over to the Rams. And then the secondary, you've got Devin Witherspoon, you've got Tariq Woolen, Quandre Diggs, Jamal Adams, who showed good leadership uh, considering what happened before with him, of course, with the trainer or whatever. Yeah, I like this Seahawks defense a lot. It's only going to get better. Jaron Reed's a very solid player. Derek Hall. They've got a lot of good football players on this unit, and they've just been shutting teams out. I mean, we're talking about the Giants. They held them to a single field goal. The Bengals, 17 points. The Cardinals, so just 10 points, 249 yards, and four plays. But if you actually look into the Cardinals game, if you watch the Cardinals game, you would know that Arizona's first score of field goal came after a fumbled punt return. And then, of course, you have... Some other plays in this game where, yeah, there's this, I remember uh, Witherspoon actually had an interception, but it was called back to it roughing the passer, and then there was a, another play in this game where the Seahawks, the only really mistake they made was that long touchdown run to Josh Dobbs. I mean, that was so surprising to me that that was able to happen, but Dobbs has been doing that the entire season against any defense. He's just been able to get out of the pocket and make a play so it's not like that surprising but i'm just happy with where seattle is right now because defensively i think they're they've got to be top 10 i don't have the number but they're just about as good as any team in the nfc defensively and then the offense which has absolutely struggled i don't think that's going to continue geno smith looked a lot better in this game than he did the last week against the bengals even against the giants i remember that giants game 
uh, yeah, the backup Drew Locke led a touchdown drive. So just the offense hasn't been good. And a lot of that is just because they haven't really been running the ball. I mean, Kenneth Walker is the type of player to where you want to put the ball in his hands as much as possible. He's absolutely elusive. He's electric. He's just unstoppable. Like we saw Kenneth Walker as a rookie go over a thousand yards, would have won offensive rookie of the year if it hadn't been for that injury. He was that good. And when you combine the fact that the Seahawks offense seems to be heading in the right direction, uh, and I have to mention the name of, of Bobo. Uh, is it Jake Bobo? That's how under Eden Bounds. It was just an unbelievable catch. This was my first look at him. And Seahawks fans will be the first to tell you he's a fan favorite. We love him here. We want to see more of him. But for a casual, he made this another catch as well. I was late in the fourth quarter to move the chains to keep the clock running. It was a really nice one. But it's going to start with the defense for the Seahawks. I mean, Jordan Brooks, you've got Draymond Jones, of course, Bobby Wagner, Boy Mafe, uh, Daryl Taylor, Doug Witherspoon. These guys have been so good the entire season. They're just absolutely dominating out there. I mean, the Seahawks held Cardinal receivers to 20 receptions on 33 targets for 150 yards and no touchdowns. And you got to remember that Rondell Moore, Hollywood Brown, they're not elite receivers, but they're extremely athletic. And we know what they can do after the catch, especially both of those guys made a couple of nice plays. Hollywood had this incredible catch late in the fourth quarter. I don't know how he was able to catch that on the sideline, but also there's a couple of plays that didn't exactly go his way because he is a smaller receiver and the Seahawks secondary is just it's just sticking to you like Lou it's just always all around the ball and it makes sense you've got Witherspoon who is a physical corner but he's also a lockdown corner there aren't many corners in the NFL that are as big or not necessarily Witherspoon's not I wouldn't say necessarily a big corner but he's about goes about what six foot six foot one but he's just strong he's physical he'll get after you and then he's stout in coverage and we saw that of course in college that's the reason why he was a top well, the Seahawks had the uh, fifth pick, so I want to say, or did they have the sixth pick? I think they had the, yeah, he was the fifth pick, and then they took JSN later on in the first round. So these rookies are getting it going. The Seahawks are just the type of team to where the offense, if they can get back to where it was, they're going to be a dark horse Super Bowl contender. It's hard to say that they're better than like the Niners, you know, the Eagles, maybe even the Cowboys. But remember, they were scoring 29 points per game through the first three weeks of the season. They went out there and they were just lighting teams up. They looked so good. And then since then, against the Giants, against the Bengals, and then yeah, just, I guess, even against the Cardinals, the offense, it definitely looked a lot better, specifically Geno and Kenneth Walker. No DK. I haven't even mentioned this. The offensive line was missing 60% of its starters. I just completely, that went over my head to even mention that. I should have mentioned it earlier. So that, that's a large reason why we're not going to see the offense do as good as it can. But to go 18-24, to 24, for 219 yards, a pair of touchdowns. Gino made some big time throws, and yeah, I like what I saw of him. The only really knock that I had of this game offensively, besides the turnovers, is the inability to convert in the red zone. I mean, when you go one for five, including 0 for four in the second half, I mean, that is not going to get it done. The Seahawks did make up for it though. They went seven of 13 on third down, which is absolutely fantastic. 